welcome back to the most amazing channel on the internet. I am your host Rebecca Felgate, and today we are talking all about the top 10 cursed dolls you should never touch. Don't touch them, leave them alone. Before we get into this video, why don't you leave it a good thumbs up and share it with a friend that needs to hear something spooky today. Also, why don't you let me know which of these dolls freaks you out the most. Watch till the end and leave me a comment, we read them out sometimes. Also if you guys want to connect with me on social media, there is a link to my Instagram in the description. Alright, coming in at number 10, we have the doll of the devil. This is the name being given to the creepy doll that caused a stir on the internet in 2018. Footage of a vampire doll that follows you with its eyes went viral after the demon doll appeared on an unmarked tombstone in Mexico. You know what? I don't like the sound of this. Oh, but it gets even worse. The doll was found with a baby bottle of blood next to it. I'm not even sure if this is the original video, but footage uploaded to YouTube by RM Videos shares the creepy doll and it's had over 330,000 views. Look how its eyes really like bore into your soul. Who watching this video would touch that doll? Yeah, rather you than me, mate. Coming in at number nine, we have Mandy. Mandy is one of the more notorious haunted dolls. I'm actually pretty creeped out just looking at her, to be honest. It's all about her cracked face, her knitted bonnet, and that creepy little lamb. They're enough for me to basically want nothing to do with her. But as I'm here hosting a top 10 video, I kind of have to give you the story. Sucks to be me. All right. So, Mandy is said to date back to the 1920s and is thought to have come from Germany. Somehow, she travelled all the way to Canada and in 1991 she was donated to a museum in British Columbia. Why was she given to a museum? Well, her previous owner thought that she was possessed. She said she would wake up at night to hear a baby crying and that the windows in her home would miraculously open. After she gave away the doll, the crying and the window opening stopped, but strange things started happening in the museum. Workers also heard crying and weirdly some staff members would find their lunch had disappeared. I'm sorry but like ain't nobody messing with my lunch. In one truly terrifying term of events, that little toy lamb was found outside of Mandy's case. How'd it get there? Well, paranormal investigators say that Mandy is possessed by the spirit of a child, but she isn't actually a menace, just playful. Nonetheless, I think I would keep my hands off her. Coming in at number eight, we have the wedding scratcher. Like, I already don't feel super great about a porcelain doll dressed as a bride. It kind of combines all of my feelings of corpse brides, Miss Havisham and spooky haunted dolls, making it a bit of a trio of doom. Speaking of doom, this bride doll bought it in bounds for a family who bought the doll for £5 in a charity shop in the United Kingdom. 50 year old Debbie Merrick brought the China doll, but then she got way more than she bargained for. It started bringing chaos and misfortune into her home. She placed the doll on display in the spare room, but since the doll moved in, her husband began waking up with scratches all all over his legs. He also had started having dreams that the doll dragged him across the floor. Debbie has also been having nightmares about the doll and says that since she came to be in their home, their smoke alarm frequently goes off. In the end, she decided, you know what, I'm just putting that doll up for sale. Good riddance. Coming in at number seven, we have dead dolls. Less curse, more, well, actually dead people turned into dolls, which, I mean, really, do you want to go touching that? No. Antony Moskvin brought to life the Russian urban legend of a nasty corpse collector. It seemed that the 44 year old took to grave robbing young dead girls, which he then turned into dolls. How? Well, he mummified the girls, dressed them up, and placed them around his room. Of course, this super creep of a middle aged man still lived with his parents, and somehow his illicit activities went unnoticed by them. He managed to convince his mum and dad that he had a thing for big dolls. At this point, when your son's 44 and still living at home and gets a thing for big dolls, is it not time to stage an intervention? I think so. Moskvin would film the corpse dolls and zoom up close into their faces, apparently obsessed with his creations. Eventually, Russian police cottoned on to what he was doing and raided his home, where they found the robbed corpses of 26 females aged between 3 and 15. Disgusting. Their families must have been distraught to learn their dead children had been defiled in this way. When I die, please. Don't turn me into a doll. I don't want that. I don't need that. Coming 
in at number 6 we have this Elmo doll. I can't believe it has been almost 10 years since an Elmo doll made headlines for threatening to kill a toddler. I remember reading about it at the time, I can't believe time has flown so much. So Elmo, as many of you may know, is a Muppet puppet from Sesame Street. A while back a bunch of Elmo dolls that could talk and say your name were released. Now 2 year olds James Bowman was the proud owner of a doll and he enjoyed Elmo saying his name so much that he quickly ran the batteries down. When the batteries were replaced by his mum, for some reason the doll stopped just saying his name, instead out of nowhere it started saying kill James. Um, Okay. The two year old then even started repeating the doll, saying kill James, which you can imagine totally and utterly freaked his mum out. She did what all good mothers would do and tossed the evil cursed doll right on out of there, although not before footage of the creepy toy in action was recorded and distributed to the press. Have a listen. Kill James? Kill James? Yeah, I don't feel good about that. His mum said that she was kind of distraught and. I mean, I'll say. Coming in at number 5 we have Robert. What a classic. While I usually love a good nautical theme, I am absolutely not here for this sailor doll. Robert is a 20th century doll that used to belong to a child called Eugene Otto. Eugene used to blame many naughty things he did on Robert and the pair would often be overheard talking, with Eugene's parents assuming Robert's voice was really Eugene. When Eugene died in 1974, Robert was left in an attic and discovered by the next owners of the home who had a 10 year old daughter. The small girl was terrified of Robert and claimed he wanted to kill her. Neighbours of the house would swear they saw Robert at the window on occasion, and a plumber who worked at the house found the doll to move across the room on its own. A reporter from the area, Malcolm Ross, visited the house to see Robert and was disturbed to sense that Robert was listening to his conversation and he even thought he was understanding him. Legend has it that this doll has caused car accidents, broken bones, made people lose their jobs, got divorced and more. Robert is now in a museum in Florida's Key West, and museum visitors supposedly experience post visit misfortunes for failing to respect Robert. So do you know what? Maybe don't even look at Robert, let alone touch him. He does not like disrespect. Another doll you should never look at is Peggy. Peggy will make you sick, and she is coming into number four. So Peggy is a haunted doll residing in the UK in Shrewsbury, Shropshire, to be precise. Peggy is owned by paranormal investigator Jane Harris, who runs an organization called Haunted Dolls. That's what it says on the tin. Really. She was given Peggy by a terrified woman who couldn't cope with the burden of the doll. Peggy is thought to have the power to visit people in their dreams, warning them or haunting them. Mediums who have worked with Peggy believe that she is linked to the Holocaust, and Jane believes that she died of respiratory issues, possibly a gassing. In 2015, Peggy caused a media stir when an article was published about her on the Mail Online, after which 80 readers reported having an awful experience after viewing her picture. Most were nausea, but some people even had panic attacks. Peggy is a said to be haunted by an evil spirit. Now Jane her owner did ask the doll to stop tormenting people, but apparently one woman even had a heart attack shortly after meeting her. Yikes. Coming in at number 3 we have Victorian morning dolls. We're lucky we're living in the age we do, as 150 years or so ago things were not so great. During the Victorian era, child mortality rates were high. As a result, the Victorians dealt with death in a pretty different way than we do now. In the late 19th century it became habitual to have a morning doll made and laid at the grave of a dead child. The dolls were usually made of wax, and their hair was generally made from the hair of the deceased, which is pretty creepy. The doll would also be dressed in the deceased's clothes and mourned as if they were a real child. These dolls were then often kept in a container by bereaved families. Now I'm not saying that they're necessarily cursed, but they were the physical representation of a dead child made with the child's real hair. I for one would not go touching them. Alright, less spooky in kind of a ghostly way, but very spooky in a real life do you want to kill me way, we have snack time cabbage patch kid at number 2. Now these 
Nazis were the true menaces of the 1990s. Sure, they might not be haunted or possessed by a demon, but these dolls were the real demon here. Why? Well, because they tried to eat the kids they belonged to. So the story goes that these dolls were released in 1996 and they were designed to make the doll look like they could eat. Plastic fries and various other fake foods were included and kids could feed them and the doll would chew them. Sounds great, but unfortunately the doll couldn't tell the difference between a plastic fry and a kid's finger and you know how much children love sticking their fingers in stuff. There were several complaints from parents of children with injured fingers. Kids would obviously stick their fingers in the doll's mouth. The doll would bite down, clamping so hard the kids couldn't always get their fingers out. There were a number of reports in the mid 90s of kids getting their fingers and other body parts stuck in the mouth of the devil dolls and one girl even got an unwelcome haircut when the doll mulched up a significant proportion of her hair. Over 100 complaints were received so the doll was recalled and $40 refunds were offered. To be honest, I'd rather have my finger than 40 bucks. Finally coming into number 1 we have one of the most famous dolls of all time, never touch her, it's Annabelle. On first viewing I kind of thought that Annabelle a Raggedy Ann doll was pretty cute looking, but then when you realise that this is the doll behind the Annabelle movie franchise, all cute goes out of the window and is replaced with cold hard fear. For all her supposedly evil biddings, Annabelle is currently in a glass jail in the form of a sealed box at the Occult Museum in Monroe, Connecticut. The museum is run by Ed and Lorraine Warren and they received the doll after it lived with a student nurse and her roommate in the 1970s. The doll behaved strangely so the pair contacted a medium who suggested that she was haunted by a dead girl named Annabelle Higgins. The pair felt a great deal of empathy and tried to nurture and care for the girl, but it turned out she was a malicious and evil spirit leading to the pair giving the doll away. It's a bit less stressful than the movie makes it sound, but nonetheless I really wouldn't fancy being the bearer of this plush. Menace. There is a reason she's locked behind glass because you should never touch this smiling devil. You just don't know what she could do to you. And I like it. So, guys, that was the top 10 scary cursed dolls you should never touch. Once again, do let me know which of these you would least like to touch. Let me know in the comment section down below. Before we get out of here, I'm just going to read some comments from one of my most recent videos, the scary Russian cover ups. Now, Kalma said this should be called the Soviet cover ups and not Russian cover ups. I bet everything that came up from the Soviet era baffles the Russians as well. P.S. I come from Finland and live less than one hour drive from Russia, and I prefer Russians over Swedish anytime. Oof. In some ways, I actually think that you raise a fair point, but in others, we aren't far enough removed from modern day Russia to know what's really going on. People at the time in the Soviet didn't know the shady stuff they were up to, and time is always the biggest revealer. Also, hello Finland. Few Grain wrote, I once went to Calgary, Alberta from Bristol, UK, but I also drove on a coach to Lochberg, Switzerland. I think I didn't pronounce that right, but yay for Switzerland! Their chocolate's always the best, and also yay for Calgary. So thank you guys for tuning into this video. Don't forget to leave me a comment if you want it to be read out in the next video. I'm your host, Rebecca Felgate. Don't go touching those dolls, but do touch that thumbs up button. We love it when you do. Also, share this video with a friend, and I'll stop being creepy, but I will see you next time.